right, now our last section here deals with the Hiawatha melodrama itself. Uh, I, I wanted to again uh, make it clear that the notion that Dvorak was invested in Hiawatha uh, is not a, a matter of wishful thinking. It's quite amply documented. He, he knew the work in this translation by Josef Slodek that you, the poet whose, whose words you just heard. Uh, he came to the United States and Jeanette Thurber, who was the head of the National Conservatory, gave him a copy. Uh, he tried twice to get libretti. He made sketches. He incorporated Hiawatha in various other places. And one of the things I wanted to do was to uh, just bring some of the sketches to, to life of, of the opera to just give you uh, the most fleeting taste of, of what, a little bit what this opera might have sounded like. Uh, and so uh, I've taken two parts that are together in the sketches, a little march and a short aria. The original text of the aria would have been the same as the wedding, which is on a way, awake, beloved. And I'd like to ask uh, Kaori to come out and join me and we'll play the first part of this.
as you probably heard, this, this melodrama started out as a kind of demonstration that I would do when I spoke about this issue to, to sort of illustrate the closeness between Dvorak's text and uh, the, the Song of Hiawatha. And, and so uh, I, what I wanted to give you, if I can figure out how to put this on properly, is that right? Uh, is is a kind of or version of this. Is that is that wrong? Backwards, <laughs> upside down. Sorry, I uh, flunked um, spatial reasoning. <laughs> no, it's true. Once my, my brother and I were called into the principal's office because we usually did well in tests, and we were told that we should not try to purposely shame the school, and it, we we had done very bad on the spatial reasoning tests. <laughs> Uh, as I haven't. Um, so I wanted to give you a little taste of, of what the melodrama was like uh, before the orchestra and before a professional actor. Uh, and what we're going to do is just the original version of just the first part of, of Hiawatha's Wedding Feast. And then after that, you'll hear the melodrama recording and you can get a sense of the, the differences. This is, again, the scherzo movement of the New World Symphony, uh, the dance of, of uh, Palpo Kinis. To the sound of flutes and singing, to the sounds of drums and voices, rose the handsome Palpo Kinis. First he danced a solemn measure, treading softly like a panther. Then more swiftly and still swifter, whirling, spinning around in circles. Leaping o'er the guests assembled, eddying round and round the wigwam till the leaves went whirling with him, stamped upon the sand and tossed it wildly in the air around him till the wind became a whirlwind, till the sand was blown and sifted like great snow drifts o'er the landscape. Chimiavos at the wedding. On away, <coughs> awake, beloved, thou the wild flower of the forest. On away, awake, beloved, thou the wild bird of the prairie. Thou with eyes so soft and fawn like, if thou only lookst at me, I am happy. I am happy as the lilies of the prairie when they feel the dew upon them. On away, awake, beloved. Thank you. And now, and now we'll hear the uh, second version of this Hiawatha's Wedding uh, from the video clip. Uh, from the, I'm sorry, the uh, audio clip. Thank you. You shall hear how Paolo Kiwis danced at Hiawatha's wedding. First he danced a solemn measure, treading softly like a panther. Then more swiftly and still swifter, Whirling, spinning round in circles, leaping o'er the guests assemble, heading round and round the wigwam, till the leaves went whirling with him like great snow drifts o'er the landscape. <laughs> Thank you. 
Then the gentle Chiriados sang in accents sweet and tender. On a way, awake, beloved. Thou the wild flower of the forest, thou the wild bird of the prairie. Thou with eyes so soft and fawn-like, if you only looked at me, I am happy. I am happy as the lyrics of the prairie when they feel the dew upon them. On the way, awake, beloved. And among the guests assembled at my Hiawatha's wedding sat the marvelous storyteller. And they said, Oh, good Iago, tell us now a tale of wonder. And Iago answered straight away, You shall hear the strange adventures of Osio, the magician. Once in days no more remembered in the Northland lived a hunter with ten young and comely daughters. All these women married warriors, only Owini, the youngest, laughed and flouted all her lovers, and then marry old Osio, old Osio, poor and ugly. But Osio was transfigured, was restored to youth and beauty, but alas for good Osio, and for Owini, the faithful, changed into a weak old woman. Then a voice was heard, a whisper coming from the starry distance. Oh, Osail, broken are the spells that bound you. Then the lodge began to tremble, and they felt it rising, rising slowly through the from the darkness of the treetop forth into the dewy starlight. And behold, the wooden dishes all were changed to shelves of scarlet. And behold, the earthen kettles all were changed to bowls of silver. All the sisters and their husbands changed to birds of various plumage. Some were jays, some were magpies, others thrushes, others blackbirds. And they hopped and sang and twittered, pecked and fluttered all their feathers, and their tails like fans unfolded. Then returned the youth and beauty of Oweenie, the youngest, and her staff became a feather. Yes, a shining silver feather. Such the dance of Paupukiwis, such the story of Iago, such the songs of Chibiyavs. Thus the wedding banquet ended, and the wedding guests departed. Thank you very much. Well, uh, we've almost come to the end of our program, but before we can do our own departure, uh, Hiawatha is going to make a departure, and uh, Joe Horowitz is going to very briefly introduce this, and that's, uh, we'll hear that. Joe.
This ending, this ending includes an apotheosis and a final chord that diminishes the silence. It's obviously narrative. There's no prescribed narrative for this ending, but if you care to grapple with the New World Symphony, you have to make up a story. There's a story at hand that fits. It happens to be the ending of the song of Hiawatha, when Hiawatha departs into the purple mists of evening. So in our melodrama, if you turn to the last page of the handout, you will see that I extracted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen lines out of this final episode in Long Ago's poem and created a musical accompaniment out of bits and pieces of the Gorshaw. I used, in part, my favorite Indian theme in the Gorshaw, which is not from the New World Symphony, but from the American Suite, the third movement, is C sharp minor, and it goes, Ya da 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 di da da di da da And let's see where C sharp minor is. And so, this has the very rhythm that David Samuels told you about.
You, you could think that uh, nothing could be di more different than the Water Sprite and the New World Symphony, but I hope we've suggested at least that in many ways both of them are motivated by texts and have texts hovering all around them. Thank you so much for your kind attention.